So you asked me about my atheism in high school in Morocco. I used to challenge some of the deeply held religious beliefs in the classroom because I would I was obligated to go to Islamic education class and my schedule worked out that I would have philosophy classes right after. And so I'd be boiling with these questions and um, I would pose some of them and I think part of it was I was interested in instilling a sense of doubt, which I think is necessary to de-radicalize societies and I would get surrounded by uh, my classmates mm. after class who would say, how dare you ask these questions, you're going to hell, how dare you uh, question the existence of God or question that the prophet said this or this thing. And um, in that moment in Brooklyn, New York, I was taken aback to um, those radical environments where I was as a teenager. And I think, thank God, because I, I trained my whole life for those kinds of experiences, so I'm able to remain calm. But it's really concerning, deeply concerning, uh, me in particular, to see that kind of extremism in some of what we thought of as mm. the most liberal, you know, safe spaces for debate and for mm. um, healthy arguments and for critical thinking. Um, and so it's really um, atrocious. It just got to a point where it's very difficult to process and to carry all of that and to feel so dehumanized in the eyes of the masses overnight. To be really stripped away your basic humanity um, and to just be seen as evil for supporting a state and a people's right to exist. I ended up getting rushed to the hospital shortly after and uh, experiencing some of the worst pain of my life and all of these PTSD um, symptoms, diagnosed with acute stress disorder. I got these cluster headaches out of nowhere. I didn't know what a cluster headache is. Um, so basically, I'm aging much faster than I should be. You know, the second I landed here, after having those experiences a week before coming here in New York, I ended up landing and feeling like I could breathe, first of all. Wait, so you had been, you're coming from the U.S., where supposedly life is safe and, yeah. and there, there are no, pro no real big problems. Yeah. And you land in Israel, Which a is country that's at war yeah. with all kinds of supposed you know terrorism everywhere. Yeah. And you land, and your reaction is yeah. you feel at peace. <laughs> I feel at peace, and I feel like for the first time since October seventh, I can breathe, and I can breathe. Reporting from IsraelForEndTimes.com, this is Brian Schrager. There is a different kind of 7 October surprise that is hitting the Jewish world outside of Israel, especially among millennial Jews in the West who are liberal, non-religious, agnostic, or even atheist. Their safe spaces, especially on university campuses, radically changed on 8 October 2023. Colleagues, co-workers, social circles, even friends with whom they shared similar ideals and a common worldview, suddenly became hostile, malicious, threatening. Why were they betrayed? Why were they abandoned, vilified, threatened? There was only one reason, because they are Jews. Their trauma has been twofold. Many of those slaughtered by Hamas on 7 October as well as many who were taken hostage, were liberals too. The ruthless brutality they experienced was a shock to their ideological Jewish colleagues in the West. But then, then, academic, social, and political circles in the West, in the United States of America, turned on them. Accusations of genocidal bloodlust were hurled at them overnight. Their entire world turned against them just because they are Jews. Stunned, traumatized, betrayed, many of these millennial Jews have begun to question their entire worldview, their entire belief system. Searching, a number of them are showing up in Israel. They are asking, is there a God? Does the Jewish state of Israel matter? Are they in fact part of something far bigger, 
far more important and significant than they ever imagined. One of these is Shama Meshtali. Born and raised in Morocco, her father is ethnically Jewish and her mother is Muslim. Living today in New York City, she came to visit Israel just a few weeks ago. As you meet her today, it's important to listen to her story, to her heart, and to learn from them. Like many of her generation, she has begun a pilgrimage that she did not expect, arguably did not choose. She is in the middle of that pilgrimage. Where it will take her is not clear. Regardless, she and those like her do not have to walk alone. We have the opportunity, at least for a while, to walk along beside them, to listen, learn, care. Join me as we do these very things with Shama Meshtali. If you are not yet a subscriber to endtimes.com and would like to see this report and others like it, I urge you to subscribe right now at the website endtimes.com. For only $7 a month, you will receive a wealth of information and insight from Jimmy Evans, Mark Hitchcock, and experts from around the world, including Israelis living right here in the Jewish state. Do yourself a favor. Sign up today. Then join me as we meet with Shama Meshtawa.